game one, did you know? Hey, Eugenio Suarez feeling himself. The hair looks good. He's got the George Michael faith earring. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's all working. And you know what? It wasn't too long ago, guys, that it wasn't working. You know, it's funny. It's funny, Roflo, to see him. He did his first press conference in spring training, and he said, good vibes only. You've been around him a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, he came up in Detroit as a shortstop in uh, 14, rookie. I mean, and... I mean, you could always tell he had the ability to hit. Yeah. I mean, it was different coming off his bat, even as a young kid. Really? Like taking BP, seeing him, see him hit. And he's got a beautiful swing. So you knew that was there. Let's start, look, I want to dive in. He gets traded over to Cincinnati for yeah. Alfredo Simon, you were saying. And then gets thrown in the Winker deal. Mm -hmm. And I say that, thrown in. But I think Jerry Depoto saw something. But I want to dive in, and we're going to go back and forth, because mm -hmm. this is the fourth year in a row Take out 2020 with COVID. Fourth year in a row, he's gone 30-plus bombs, and he's not done yet, okay? And I'm going to bring up a board here in a second when we get done with this rip of homers. Ooh, he's got one of the most gorgeous right-handed swings. It's tough to have the gorgeous right-handed swing. Okay, this is the other day against the Atlanta Braves, probably one of the games of the year, top five. Bring up the board of home run leaders since 2018. Would you know that he leads? Wow. Well, that's what DePoto saw. Is that <laughs> I mean, crazy? I mean, yeah, he had a down year. So, I mean, like you said, it, like kind of throw in on the Winker deal because, you know, Jesse was some money was involved mashing. there. There's some money involved there. But, I mean, you know what the ability is, you know, what he has in him. And he's been a presence in that lineup. He's taking so much pressure off guys by what he's been able to do. But, I mean, you look at his career numbers. I mean, big. He had 51 year. 51 year. He's going to have 300 plus homers. He just looks like a good time to me. All right. So what did DePoto see? I want to dive in a little bit and take you back. Let's get back into the tape, Best Rod. Because at the end of 2021, while no one was really truly paying attention, he had a really hot September. Mm -hmm. And maybe we squeak him on the deal. We want Jesse Winker's on base percentage. But hey, wait a second. We're willing to eat. Pause this. We're willing to eat some of Suarez's money. Oh, by the way, we really do truly want him. So in September, bring up his split since 2018, S Rod. And take a look at this. And it always throws me for a loop right here. We got the weighted runs created plus. I get it. Park adjusted, but you got the 277, 362 on base, the slugs at 550, and the 132 OPS plus right there. And then in 2022, 235, the average is down, 336, 468 slug, and the weighted runs created plus. You know, maybe he's getting pitched a little bit differently coming out of Cincinnati in T Mobile. No. So the weighted runs created plus when we park adjust it. Kind of get skewed. I know people always tweet at me. How could his numbers be better across the board, but his weighted runs created plus is down? I want you to focus on this, though, down low. Because in September, he closed on a heater. 1260 OPS, 219 weighted runs created plus in 25 games. So he came into spring training like, I've got it. I'm feeling good. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I figured out what I needed to do. And he just took that right into this year, for sure. And he said he felt comfortable from day one going into Seattle. J-Rod makes the club. They're going for it. Scott Service said, be yourself. He seems like a guy who doesn't want to be kicked in the tush. He wants to be left alone. Let him smile. Let him control the clubhouse. One thing I have noticed about him, bring up, get me back into the tape. Nobody gets shifted. We, we talk about, pause this. We talk about shifting left-handers. There's not too many right-handed hitters. That gets shifted like this guy. Yeah, well, not not as much too as, as I mean, and he's dead pull. I don't know, we were talking a little about a bit earlier, maybe like Nolan because how much of a Nolan, dead pull yeah. he is. But I mean, he doesn't hit the ball on the ground to the other side. So I mean, if it's if he's hitting Oppo, it's in the air. So I mean, that's why team they're just playing the percentages that if he pulls it on the ground. All right, br bring up how many shifts, right-handed wise. Take a look at this. <laughs> 
Percentage of plate appearances against the shift since 2018, 82% of the time. He's, he's feeling frisky next year Yeah, with the shift leaving. Oh, he's going to be able to hit some balls on the ground, maybe hard, that get through. But how has he been able to combat this? Like you said, ton of fly balls, but also the ability, let's get back into the tape, also the ability to hit the ball the other way. And even when I played against him late in my career, early in his, he had pop dead yeah. center and oppo. And he's shown it off recently. I mean, this is a guy that no par can really hold him. Look at that. That's dead right field like a left-handed pull hitter hit that <clears throat> in Comerica. So able to just move the ball around. Do you, have you been in caught against him? And how, how did you kind of attack him? Oh, yeah, well. My, the, the times I've, I've actually had to face him. So, like, I mean, knowing him when he came up, knowing that he had that kind of power, that kind of, you, you could see it from an early early age on, with him. But facing him, I remember times like when I was with Arizona, we were facing Cincinnati. He was on a run in that in that when we were you were showing 2019 there, where we couldn't get him out, and we were trying everything. The one weakness he might have had was like that kind of inside, down and in. You, every once in a while, you can you can get him there, yeah. but he wouldn't chase. Far in, so your, your your window and your margin of error was so small, and you know he was good at laying off that pitch just in. That's where you were trying to get him out. But you look know, at what? this. Take a look. This, I mean, players in the 85th percentile or higher barrel percentage. So get in a barrel to the baseball and do not chase. Mm. I mean, so he's up there in some rarefied air with the Juan Sotos and Max Muncies of the world. So, yeah. you know, it's funny when you watch him hit. He appears because. He's so fluid through the zone. It appears that he's got a, a, a little bit of a long swing, and you can rush him in. But you say that's not the case. No, it's just it's just smooth. It just looks that way. That's it, he's he's one of those guys like when we, when you're watching, like man, the game looks kind of easy. Like yeah. it looks like he's in slow motion. You know that to me, that's what it is. I mean, it, it, it can look a little long. It can look a little slow, but it's lightning quick. And even even as a fielder to a third base, everything's so smooth. His actions are really smooth, and that's. That's, he's been like that his entire career. Mariners are a story, Robert. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Yeah. They really, really are. And it's going to be interesting to see how they react to the pressure and the atmosphere of the playoffs. I'd love to see them play playoff series at home because that would be definitely a great, great atmosphere, those rowdy fans in the Pacific Northwest.